Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the DB Corp Limited Q2 and H1 FY 2024 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. We have with us today the Senior Management Team of DB Corp Limited, Mr. Pawan Agarwal, Deputy Managing Director, Mr. Girish Agarwal, Non-Executive Director, Mr. Lalit Jain, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Mushtaq Ali, Senior Vice President FNA, and Mr. Prasun Kumar Pandey, Head Investor and Media Relations, who will represent DB Corp Limited on the call. The management will be sharing the key operating and financial highlights for the quarter ended September 30th, 2023, followed by a question and answer session. Please note that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. Documents relating to the company's financial performance have already been emailed to you and are available on the website of the stock exchanges and the company's investors section. Trust you have been able to go through the same. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pawan Agarwal. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you very much, everyone, and a very good evening to everyone. And thank you for joining the Q2 FY 2024 DB Corp earnings conference call. We will begin the call by highlighting the key uh, financial parameters performance for the quarter and ended uh, September 30th, 2023, followed by key operational updates. We are very happy to report that Danik Bhaskar continues his track record of delivering strong operating results for eight consecutive quarters, helped by strong growth of advertisement revenue, softening of newsprint prices, our circulation strategy, and well thought out cost control and optimization measures. These all have helped in expanding our margins. For first half of 2024, our console advertising revenue grew by 15% to rupees 8,247 million against rupees 7,179 million. Total revenue grew by 12.2% to rupees 11,755 million against rupees 10,480 million. EBITDA grew by 77% to rupees 3,035 million against 1,715 million. PAT grew by 124% to rupees 1,790 million against rupees 798 million. In quarter two FI24, consolidated advertising revenue registered growth of 13% YOY to rupees 4,301 million against rupees 3,811 million. EBITDA grew by 71.5% YOY to rupees 1,676 million against rupees 977 million. EBITDA margin expanded by 1,000 basis points to 28% against 18%. Our average cost for newsprint has reduced from the high of rupees 63,500 per metric ton in Q2 FY 2023 to rupees 56,500 per metric ton in Q1 FY 2024, and now further down to rupees 51,500 per metric ton in Q2 FY 2024, resulting in newsprint cost reduction of 16% YOY. And we expect newsprint purchase price to remain softened in the coming quarters. Our PAT grew by 106% YOY to rupees 1,003 million against rupees 488 million. Radio segment has delivered industry's best EBITDA margins, which are sustainable. With government-led radio business initiative of allowing new and increase of DAVP rates, radio business is expected to accelerate its top line and bottom line. Overall, it has been a very encouraging quarter and we remain committed to delivering high quality content and engaging experiences through our print publications, ensuring that our readers continue to find value in Danik Tasker. Moving on to our digital business, our monthly active users are more than 13 million in August 2023, and Danik Bhaskar is the digital leader with the number one Hindi and Gujarati news apps. Coming to the radio business, revenue grew 6% YY at Rs. 359 million versus Rs. 338 million, while EBITDA grew by 2% YY to Rs. 108 million versus Rs. 106 million. 
radio segment has delivered industry's best EBITDA margin, which are sustainable with government-led radio business initiative for allowing news and increase of DAP rates. MyFM has been relentless in its efforts to connect with the audience and enhance listener engagement through groundbreaking content creation. We will continue to fuel these efforts to help our omni-channel presence grow. With this, I would now request Mr. Girish Agarwal to update, update us on the operations. Over to you, Girish. Uh, thank you, Pawan, and good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this call. Uh, we are pleased to conclude the first half of fiscal 2024, continuing our streak of bettering our performance. The print media segment has, over the past few quarters, cemented its place as the most trusted source of news. This positioning has helped create a purchase cycle as advertisers continue to come to print and increase their sales and thereby increase their ad spends with us. Traditional advertisers such as education, real estate, government, jewelry, health, they all continue to use print as their preferred medium. The auto sector is also uh, seeing the increasing ad spends and we, are, we have see a lot of headroom for future growth here. As we've been highlighting, new age digital sectors continue to see value in print media and in this quarter, also, uh, digital app-based companies and startups continued their print preference. As the leader in the print segment, Danik Bhaskar has been outperforming the sector over the past two years, and our, team, and our teams continue to work hard to extend their performance. And I would like to take a minute more on our teams. Uh, I, I must say, uh, all the 9,000-odd people working with us, they've been really, really doing their best, and which is very evident from our leadership from our appreciation of the content, from our advertising, uh, production, circulation, uh, IT, finance, every possible department. So I just want to uh, do a special mention of the great work done by our team. And lastly, on the cost front, we have been benefiting from the downward trend of newsprint prices. We are also rolling out certain initiatives that we believe will help our operating efficiencies furthermore in the long run. And this is all from our side to start with. And my, me and my colleagues would now be very happy to respond to your queries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. An operator will take your name and announce your turn in the question queue. Participants are requested to only use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Ria Mehta from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, so my first Thank question you. is in regards to the advertisement. So I'm aware that uh, coming forward in November, December, we have three major state elections coming. So what is the model code of conduct for state election and uh, why, when are they not allowed to uh, advertise? And similarly for center elections, from when will that model code of conduct start? So the model code of conduct in all the three states of Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan already is in uh, operation right now. And the reason why government does it, uh, the election commission does it, for simple, so that you are, no government should be able to influence any voter by offering them any kind of uh, advantage or the promises or uh, luring them away with the advertising. So I think that's the prime reason. Uh, how was that and done? Uh, I think whatever governments of these three states did in last many years, especially in last one year, offering the benefits to the consumer, to the millions of people, I think that increased the disposable income in the market. And that is very much evident uh, in our results also because more people have extra money, they go and spend out, advertisers feel happy about it, they sell their product, their advertisement. Right, right. Uh, but uh, just from these three states, how much is the impact uh, on the advertisement with the absence of these major three states? Sorry, I couldn't get your question right. Uh, with the absence of government advertisement from these three states for a period of, say, one month or so, uh, what would be the kind of impact? And what duration is it not allowed? Is it around, uh, I think it's around 40 days, 30 days uh, overall. Uh, uh, I won't know the impact r right now to give it to you exact number. But the impact is not very substantial because government itself is a, around 10, 14% of the total category for us. Uh, the state government? 
Sorry. Yeah, all put together, state and the center. Okay. At the center, when the order code of conduct will start, and for how long? I think same forty forty five days before the election date. Okay. Uh, coming forward to auto numbers, I read in your presentation that we are seeing good auto numbers, and you are very bullish on the growth going forward. So, uh, where uh, the I think the festive demand might have started. So, how is it so far for auto advertising? So, I tell you, auto as you remember, because last two three years they had a major issue in the shape and the availability of yes. vehicles, so they were not advertising. Now they have started advertising. So we are seeing a good, good growth coming from there. Especially okay. one thing you will have to remember: in the quarter two last year was a few days of Navratra. This year the Navratra is not in the Q2; it's in Q3. So because of that, there is some shifting advertising here and there, but doesn't make much of difference. Got it. Um, and in terms of uh, so what are the kind of EVs right now and advertisement? Do we see any scope of EVs growing? And the second question would be, what is the ad to edit ratio currently? So uh, you may be aware that in the newsprint newspaper business, the ad to edit ratio generally varies from uh, you know 70, 30, 67, 33. Uh, but okay. this is all under control for simple reason because you can increase number of pages if then the ads are more. We are mm -hmm. unlike radio or television. Right. So edited ratio is not a big concern for us. That's number one. Okay. And uh, the way the market looks like, things looking good also going forward. Uh, in terms of yields, uh, do we have see any May, scope of increasing? If you don't mind my saying, you are on the fifth question already. So sorry, you sorry. come back, and get back and the, and take the so other sorry. one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a next question from the line of Sampath Nayak from Tiger Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, sir. Congratulations on good set of numbers. So my Thank question you. is uh, on uh, margin sustainability, sir. So we clogged really good mar EBITDA margins this quarter. So uh, are these margins sustainable? And what is the margin uh, outlook for coming two quarters? Uh, so, sir, we are right now at a 28%. 28 percent uh, margin in this quarter, and uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, also that uh, the entire team, you know, eight ten thousand people are working towards it, that we should be able to sustain this kind of margin. Maybe a couple of percentage up and down. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, coming to the uh, new spend prices, so how are they uh, shaping up? Uh, do can we further see drop in the newsprint prices? So, frankly speaking, our newsprint prices, if you see the numbers, uh, has already come down uh, considerably uh, overall. From if you see the last year, the same quarter was 63,500, which has come down to some 51,500 now. Uh, in Q3, uh, I don't expect much of the newsprint prices coming down because of the Diwali season. We are using much better newsprint quality for the advertisements also. So I don't see them because the newsprint mix will change in this quarter. We'll use more of an important and high, high quality one. But going forward, I believe another 5%, 6%, 4% advantage should happen with us. Great, sir. So coming to the digital side, so uh, what is the contribution of uh, digital revenue to our total revenue? And uh, like, uh, how how is it the shape for next two to three years? And are we looking to okay. any do any acquisitions or something? Oh, so let me first of all start with your acquisition question. Uh, as of now, company has no plan to do any acquisition business because we already are on a particular path, and we are committed to that, and we are working towards it, and we are seeing a good results coming out of that. And as for the revenue is concerned, right now the size is too small. And maybe in next couple of uh, quarters, the number should come up more, and we should be able to give you some more information on that. Great. Uh, so, final question on the election front. So, uh, like obviously, like general elections coming in eight, six to eight months. So, we we will witness good demand. 
but how about like post elections uh, like the, the demand uh, will we be able to sustain uh, this demand i think this question you should be asking to the government of india okay uh okay sir uh thank you and all the best thank, thank you, you. we have a next question from the line of himanshu upadhyay from o3 pms please go ahead yeah, hi congratulations on good set of numbers i had a question on uh, the the 4.2% uh, subscription growth okay can you give some idea of uh, how much is value and uh, volume and uh, is it launch uh, is value because if you see our cover price has been increasing circulation has been steady at 42 lakh copies roughly and cover price has increased so i think that is the impact on that and uh, we have seen the price of paper come off and the profitability improve would our focus be to again uh, increase the circulation copies uh, and a newer geographies or you think will uh, for uh, that is secondary currency how are you thinking specifically so yeah so we have no plan to get into a new geography uh, the market where we are present the 12 states i think we have enough scope in these markets only to further grow more copies uh, which we are working on towards it and we also don't want to increase the cover price going forward because we are already almost at uh, average cover price of 4 rupees 86 paisa i think that's uh, decent size we don't want to take it more as a pinch to the pocket of the readers so our focus would be to maintain this cover price and um, you know grow the circulation in these markets itself and uh, uh, one last question uh, the radio ad revenue are uh, sell more they are still going at a lower lower value terms versus uh, the news print okay any specific reason and how far away can the radio be or is from what the potential is so the radio's growth is largely driven by uh, innovations uh, activations uh, uh, non air time uh, business improvements as well as our yield improvements and we are uh, uh, you know we are working very closely with our advertisers to drive better value to them by better programming and and that's the way for radio's growth it has to grow on an innovation as you rightly said it has no scope for uh, adding more inventory uh, and and uh, for the last several quarters we've been growing basically from our innovations and our improvement in our little bit of improvement in our yields as well so my question was uh, basically both uh, news print and uh, radio are much more uh, local okay the content of local is uh, pretty high okay so should not uh, radio be also going at a much faster pace like sir, what we see 12 percent type of growth in no no sir first. what happened in a in a radio in a radio there is a limitation of the inventory because they can't increase number of pages for example if you see my number of pages last year in the same quarter i was at 20 pages while this quarter i am at almost 21.7 uh, pages so i've increased almost 8 9 percent number of pages for for accommodating more advertising the radio can't do that because they have a limited uh, 60 minute is 60 minutes and they can only run 20 25 minutes of advertising in that they can't take it 35 minutes so they have to grow uh, through the yield and the innovation so are the uh, occupancy full for the radio with uh, whatever we can get all the prime time for all the radio channels are already done they are all running full okay okay thanks uh, and yeah thank you sir thank you sir thank you we have a next question from the line of pritesh cheda from lucky investments please go ahead yes, sir i have uh, two questions one uh, in your press release you mentioned this 51500 new sprint price so this uh, price has flowed in in your quarter two numbers completely or there is a lead lag there No, no, sir. This is the the quarter two price. Quarter two price. Okay. And quarter three would be almost similar, and quarter four maybe we'll see a further going down. Okay. So, uh, so as of now, for the full quarter, you had the this particular price flowing in. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, my second question is, sir, uh, you know, it's been a couple of quarters uh, for which we are having a fairly strong double digit ad growth. Uh, what kind of outlook do you see over the next uh, two to four quarters uh, would be, uh, you know, would be helpful? So, frankly speaking, we believe uh, that uh, this kind of percentage growth should continue because um, it may take a little bit of dent because of the code of conduct, uh, because government advertising has come to stand still, uh, you know, for this 40 days, and then again in the in the in the general election it may happen. But otherwise, uh, other categories are doing decent. Real estate, education, they all are doing decent. So idea is that uh, the market keep uh, to be so buoyant and we need to ensure that advertiser comes to us. Okay. So it's not a given situation where we simply say, relax, team can you know start relaxing and saying that 10%, 12% growth is given. Nothing is given. We need to really fight for every percentage. Okay. And any swing in market shares do you think uh, would have happened? Oh, sure. Because you will appreciate this kind of growth has not come in the market. So uh, market is not growing at 10, 12%. Market may be growing at single digit. So this suddenly involves a lot of swing in terms of market share, in terms of value and everything in our favor. Okay. Uh, and so my last question is, uh, in your key, uh, you know, advertising sectors or customer sectors, if you could give the top three and the contribution uh, to the ad pie. So, sir, if I look at the H1, which will give you a more robust That's picture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, government uh, is, has grown much bigger because last year, if you remember, we were not getting the government advertising. So this year we are getting it. So the percentage growth is much higher. But in terms of contribution, they are at, uh, yeah, they're still higher because of that thing. 14%. Uh, response is, yeah, uh, slightly higher actually. Response is one category which has grown decently. Education has grown, uh, again, in almost 10%. Real estate uh, is slightly flat from last one and a half, two months because of the election. So uh, no much of thing happening there. Automobile has grown in a single digit. Uh, healthcare has grown in double digit. Uh, FMCG is one category which has slowed down, which is we see a decline of 10% in the FMCG category. And jewelry is, uh, again, 5% growth. So yeah, this is the various uh, segments which are somebody, some, some of them are growing, some of them are not growing that way. So barring government, all of these categories would be 5 7% contribution to the ad revenue? No, 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 no. So our response category is in double digit. Education is in double digit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and real estate is also touching the double digit. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Sakshi Chabra from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, sir. Congratulations on a great set of numbers. So I wanted to understand that uh, this ad rate increase that uh, has happened on the base rate for the radio segment. So what is the kind of impact that we can see uh, on our ad revenues because of this? So our radio revenue, uh, government revenue is a, uh, is a high single digit uh, uh, in our total revenues. And uh, as of now, we haven't received exact uh, rates, but we should get anything about a 43% uh, uh, improvement in our overall rates. So uh, if the volume holds, holds the same, we should, that revenue should increase by about 40, 45%. No, but your uh, government contribution you said is high single digit, but this 43%? No, 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 no. About 9, 9, 10%. For example, so for example, if 9% is the overall government advertising right. and government decides to increase it by 40%, mm -hmm. so there will be a 4.5%, 4% growth coming because of the government advertising, provided they keep the volume same. Correct. So 4 to 5% is the kind of revenue growth that you will see because of this? Possibly if they keep the volume same. Because if tomorrow they start trickling with the volume, mm -hmm. then, then may may come down. And we are, we are yet to receive the uh, final rates from the government for us. Uh, uh, once we get that, we'll be in a better position to estimate. Okay. It could be even higher. And in terms of the non-government side, uh, is there 
do you see that you know any increase in yields that you can take on this radio ad revenue side uh we are doing our best uh with a mix of innovations and uh, our activations and our uh, non air time at uh, spots as well as delivering better product to improve the yields and we are hopeful that in the uh, coming quarters we should be able to start taking some yield improvements as well so sure. okay and i wanted to check that uh, on uh, is there any update that we have on, on the revenue share that we were supposed to receive from google uh the matter is uh, us under cci jurisdiction they are uh, working on it they have mm-hmm. not heard anything as of now okay but any uh, numbers that you can mention as to what would be the kind of contribution will not be prudent to prejudge okay. cci decision outcome all right Okay, and can you give any numbers on uh, the digital paid subscribers? Uh, yeah, things are we are doing certain experiments, but as if you remember, uh, we requested and you all kindly consented hmm. that we will not disclose the digital number for few few quarters more, so that okay. we are able to come back and do some work on that. Okay, but on the qualitative side, can you mention about how the traction is it as per your expectation? better than expectation sorry sorry on one uh, no specific number but can you just give some sort of uh, you know outlook as to uh, is it been you know better than expectations as per expectations or how the, how has it been panning out so far or how has it's a mix, mix it's a mix basket okay like how have people been reacting to uh, the fact that you know you are uh, there is going to be pay, more of paid uh, i mean a lot of you've made changes right not now a lot of content is not available for free as much as it was as i mentioned to you as i mentioned to you is a mixed basket okay it's we'll too premature to comment on that okay sure thank you thank you thank you We have our next question from the line of Rishikesh Oza from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is this mm-hmm. with respect to the radio. Uh, so what is the listenership number for uh, radio channel for the quarter? And uh, also wanted to get uh, some broad idea on how the listenership number is actually calculated. so as you are aware that uh, a lot in our markets uh, the listenership uh, activity which used to be done earlier has not been conducted uh, so we our, our metric in our markets is uh, the response that we deliver to our advertisers we measure that very diligently uh, we uh, ask advertisers to check the number of people who walk in and how many of them remember the ad or remember the radio station and that's that's uh from the day one for the last 15 16 years that's been the metric that uh, we've been using with our advertisers which is more authenticated uh, and not depending on any listenership data which is third party okay okay thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraints that was the last question for today I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your participation and time on this earnings call today. I hope we have responded to your queries, and we will always be happy to be of assistance to our investor relations department, headed by Mr. Prasun Kumar Pandey, for all your further queries. Thank you, and have a great evening. Thank you. On behalf of DB Corp Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.